Hi guys, welcome to another video. So today is going to be a little bit different because it's going to be a tutorial. I'm actually going to show you guys how to do the beaded daisy chain. So what you're going to need is some beads. These are 11-0 Toho beads. And I have bought the majority of my Toho beads from a website called artbeads.com hashtag not spots hashtag one day you're also going to need some beading needles and this is beading thread a hundred percent nylon so you're gonna want a really nice thin but strong thread then you're gonna want at least I would get two just to make it easier of jewelry pliers so these are flat and you're gonna want some chain and then you're also gonna want some kind of clasp I personally like lobster clasps the best okay so to get started I am going to start by threading my needle into the space on the lobster clasp I'm just gonna make myself an anklet so in order to put this thread onto this lobster clasp, I put the thread through once and then in the same direction that I put it through, I'm going to go back in again. And then once I have the needle through, there's going to be a circle. There's going to be this here that's going to wrap around the space in the lobster clasp and what you're going to do is before you tighten this all the way is you're going to run your needle through that circle space and then you'll pull it all the way you'll pull it all the way tight up against the space and I would do that at least three times there's a difference between just going it through going it through and wrapping it around and creating that knot so if you don't go through this thread here you'll just be wrapping the thread around and it will be easier for the for that thread to come undone which is what we don't want and i'm going to use um, a spacer a spacer bead in between each of my flower sets but that's just what i like that's how i like it to look if you want all of your daisies all right next to each other um feel free to make them all right next to each other but i am going to be using a spacer bead which is really just putting one bead in between each of the daisies so now we have one bead on our thread which we're not going to count into our daisy because it's just a spacer so now to start our daisy we're going to pick up five of our beads at once on the needle And then we're going to pull this all the way down. So now, what I like to do is place my finger behind those beads. It makes it easier to see it. It makes it easier to hold. And remember, we're only counting the five beads that we just put on the needle. So now we're going to run our needle back through the first bead that we threaded onto our needle. And we're going to run our needle through from top to bottom when holding your beads towards you you don't want to go from bottom to top because it'll warp the beads in a weird direction that we don't want and you're going to want to pull that all the way tight to where the beads begin to curl already see half of the flower here so we now have this middle bead and we have these four beads around it which are basically the petals I personally like to flatten that shape up against my finger so it's in between my thumb and my pointer finger and see that middle bead and then a bead on top and a bead on bottom so now we're gonna grab two more beads at the same time on the needle 
and remember that this is the middle bead quite literally and then the bead that you can't quite see is one of the petals and this top bead is also one of the petals so we have two more of the petals on our needle and you're gonna want to go from right to left don't go left to right because it will warp the beads in a way that we don't want to so you're gonna go from right to left and you're gonna beat it you're gonna thread it all the way through and there you go we just made our first little daisy if you want the middle bead to be a different color that last bead will be the different color. So you'll pick four of the petal colors and if you want the middle of the flower to be a different color that fifth bead will be a different color than the rest of the petals. Only using the five beads that we just threaded through. When you thread the needle back through the bead you're gonna want to go from top to bottom and you're gonna want to pull it all the way tight so that the beads curl over onto themselves and you'll end up with this shape before we add on the other petals and if it um, if they don't curl over onto ourselves and you have like a weird gap of thread and beads you can just kind of pull that thread and then tighten it until you get this shape. So now we're gonna thread on two more beads in the petal colors. Remember to hold it on your pointer finger and then you can kind of sandwich it in between your thumb and your pointer finger because all you really need access to is this bead right here. You'll see that that bead is perfectly positioned for you to thread the needle through. And you're gonna wanna thread it from right to left. And once you pull it all tight, this is the shape that you'll end up with. And that's how you get the middle color to be a different color than all the other petals. Okay, so once you have reached your desired length, which is going to vary depending on what you're making, basically what I'm going to do is attach it to the chain the same way I attached it to the lobster clasp. What you're gonna wanna do is take your pliers on either side and open it from side to side. So I'm just going to attach it in the same way I did attach it to the lobster clasp. If you wanna hide your thread, you'll just run it through the bead and then through all of, that, all of the beads, aside from the middle bead, on the last flower. So here is my finished project. This is, this is the design that I went with. I did a spacer bead, a full colored flower, a spacer bead, and then a flower with a different middle. And towards the end, I did some solid gold ones with one extra little solid gold one. And this is just gonna be a little inklet for me. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you and help you out. And I personally won't be making any jewelry to sell but i will be making these little charms for fun so you can check out my etsy if you'd like to purchase one and i'll also leave a link for all of the supplies that i personally used in the description uh, but yeah so hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you learned something and i'll see y'all next time bye